Welcome, friends. Last Guy here, and it's time for us to watch The Last Jedi. And you know, if I could, I would have started this video with me throwing this lightsaber, but it's a hundred dollar lightsaber, and you can't take this apart. So, not happening. Instead, we'll just throw this Kirby plushie. So, there you go. There you go. Just like Luke, I betrayed the one thing I love so much, the Force, but in this case, Kurt Kirby. Um, so, The Last Jedi. Uh, if you haven't seen the movie, I just spoiled the first ten seconds of the movie. <laughs> so we're gonna watch this together maybe you haven't seen the movie but you do know you can't be in a bubble on this people were really mad about this so here's what happened I saw it on premiere and everyone who saw it on premiere uh, a, a lot of people saw it on premiere because I remember the critics were like this is amazing it's, it's the best newest movie everyone's gonna love this movie and then the critics just watched as the torrent of, of the audience just hate hated this movie they hated it so much. Holy crap. I personally really liked it, and I think just the more thought I put to it, the worse it gets. But the more thought you put to any movie, the worse it gets. Like, the cracks show the more you look at something. That's just how it is. But I I think it's because cin cinematography-wise, it's amazing. As a standalone movie, it's pretty good, I think. Now, when you put on the weight of everything before it, I think it does hurt it a bit. And I think that's really what happened there. It just reminds me of... Uh, because I think the way critics are is they just take a movie as, uh, standalone. Even if it's a sequel, they take it standalone. That's how they are. Which is why you had so many critics complain about Infinity War needing you to have seen the last 20 movies. They're like, I don't understand anything that's going on here. Why is it relying on me having seen these other movies? Because it's a sequel! But I think that just shows you how it is with, with critics. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes has it at 91? Yeah, 91%, which, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, the, uh, the audience has it at 44%. I think both those verdicts are correct, <laughs> depending on where you fall on this, because it is a very polarizing movie. The budget was about 300 million, it made 1.3 billion, so yay. The thing is, though, there were, uh, the Solo came after this. Of course, it was a movie that nobody cared about, so... But Solo doing so badly is what shifted how Disney handled the next movies, uh, plan on the next movies. Recently, we just found out D and D are not going to do Star Wars movies anymore, which is probably fine. These are D and D are the guys who made Game of Thrones, and everyone was really mad at them right now. So, honestly, I don't think they could have come up against the weight of not only fans but also they weren't going to do Star Wars justice. There's no way they could. Um, they they just proved it with Game of Thrones. So. What I remember, a lot of this movie, honestly, it's a very memorable movie for me. Like, the big beats, for sure. The little, like, you can't perfectly memorize all the little dialogue, but I think the big beats, for sure, because not a lot actually happens in this movie. Like, all the characters go through a little arcs, and the one big complaint everyone makes, and those of you who've seen the movie know what it is, I get it, I definitely do, but it, it kind of needed to happen, but I guess it could have been done better. And I'll say more about why that, why all that's there and why it's necessary, but also I agree it could have been better because everyone hates that one section, but mm, I don't know. Like, just could have been better execution, perhaps. But overall, very enjoyable movie, and all the things people nitpick about are just nitpicks. I think you could easily just like, bleh, nah. Um, but like one of the, like two or three of the bigger picture things, I think there's something there. But overall, it's just a really good movie. Saying this before even stop watching the movie. But now, having seen all the movies, one through seven, and now we're gonna see, and also Solo and Rogue One, having seen nine movies. Nine movies! Having seen nine movies, this being the tenth, the weight of all that, now we're gonna see this one. I'm curious what I'm gonna think now. Maybe it makes me th like it even more. I think the only thing is, when it comes to Luke, probably not so much, but everything else maybe. We'll see. But, uh, let's get going already! I'm sorry, little buddy. I'm, I'm so sorry. Oh god, we're on camera! Okay, so... Um... Alright, episode 8 is done! And... Fuck the haters! <laughs> All right, cut, cut the, uh, cut the commercial. I mean, cut the credits. Cut the, cut the commercial. Seriously, I, especially now after watching all the other movies, it actually makes this movie better. Like maybe all the all fuck the nerds. Apparently, the nerds just need to watch all the movies again because 
in context, this movie fits perfectly. Like, Luke failing makes perfect sense for his character. Like, part of it, he has to build it up for He's like, yeah, I'm this big here and I got a bit of an ego kind of thing. He feeds that to you. But it's also just what Luke does, kind of. Like, Luke stumbles a little bit. He he does go to the force a little, the, the, the dark side a little bit every now and then. We've seen that. And he does the same thing here. He's not perfect. Luke isn't perfect. Luke was never Jesus. I don't know why we think he's Jesus. I... I don't understand. Nerds, I don't... I don't think you guys watched the movie. I think I've watched the movie more than you guys have at this moment right now. I'm speaking to nerds in general. The royal nerds. <laughs> Seriously! Luke is making it up as he goes. That's, that's Luke. He's never been perfect. At any point, has Luke been perfect? It, the thing is, like, yeah, he believed so much in his father, he was able to turn him back, and that's great. But he saw something that he's never seen before in Kylo Ren. And for a moment, a moment, he doesn't think he can deal with it other than with his lightsaber. And the second he turns on, he's like, oh, no, I'm wrong. Shit, am I wrong. He's like, oh, shit, I'm really wrong. Once he sees Kylo's awake... It's like, wait, wait, no, wait, no, no, wait, that, ah, uh, shit. Like, yeah, he went too far, and he blew it. He blew it, and that's why he's so not happy with himself, because he's like, yeah, all these deaths are on my hands at this point. Like, everyone dying to Kylo Ren is on his hands, and he feels that, and that's why he cuts himself off from everything. He's like, I failed, screw it, Jedi suck, I'm out. Like, he's so mad about that. He's so wounded about it. It all fits. It's all fine. I don't... It's all... It's all in character. Did... Did anyone else watch episode 4 through 6 before watching The Last Jedi? Because I feel like they didn't. I really feel like they didn't. I, seriously? <laughs> the hell? Um... Again... The movie starts with Poe doing a joke, which again doesn't land, and then it, then it gets better. <laughs> Like, eventually it gets better. I, I, I still feel like... I feel like the crap on... Um, I forgot his name. Not Grand Moff Tarkin. Yeah, Hux. I feel like the crap on Hux too much. Like, they leaned on it a little too much. There were some things that were funny, but they leaned on it a little too much, which isn't helpful for his character. Because <laughs> he needs to be an authority there, but he's always the guy that gets thrown around by the Force users. Not good. Not good. Because you never see Vader do that to to Tarkin. You never see him do that. He wouldn't. He doesn't even try to do that. Like he's got respect out of him. And that's probably the problem with Kylo Ren and Hux is they don't respect each other. They just really Hux is looking for a point, a chance to kill Kylo, and Kylo's like looking for a chance to not get killed by. Just he's like he knows he's gonna try to betray him. It's just how can he utilize that and make sure he doesn't get betrayed somehow. Hux. Trying to kill Kylo? Kylo just doesn't want to do Hux's job. That's that's perfect, because, like, Kylo's not going to do any logistical work. He's not going to do any logistical work. We all know this. And Hux is willing to do it because he enjoys it, I guess. Because he likes yelling at people. Simple as that. It's so beautifully shot. It is so beautifully shot. It's amazing how well shot it is. And I kept, as I'm watching the movie, I'm like, okay, here's all the nitpicks. I know what the nitpicks are. Here's all the complaints. I know what all the, the plot holes are. And I'm like, no, this is just too nitpicky. Or it's just like, no, this actually works. This works. This works. That works. That's fine. That makes sense. Watching it a, at this point, like, it's been a year plus. I don't, last time I watched this was in theaters, twice. It's the last time I saw it. So, with that much time to marinate, and then actually seeing it again, and catching things I didn't catch when I was in theaters, it's like, oh, wow, well, yeah, okay, it's this this makes sense, but you had to hear it a third freaking time. <laughs> and these fit, that fits. It just fits. Canobite, by the way, everyone's least favorite part, freaking fits in this damn movie. What is in every movie? What is in every movie? The, the scene, the bar scene. Every movie has Moss Eisley. Every single movie has Moss Eisley. There's always some place where there's a bunch of aliens just having some drinks or whatever and just hanging out and we get to see a bunch of aliens because there's there has to be that scene where you get to see a bunch of the race. That's it. So yeah, there's always you got there has to be a locale with a crap ton of aliens. 
And that's what Canabite is. And it's like, yeah, they warp in, they warp out, and th there's an ex explanation for everything. Watching it again, trying to knit, trying to just see where the holes are and see if they're going to reinforce them or not. Like, this movie just freaking works and fits. Besides Rose crashing into freaking Finn, are you kidding me? I'm not going to let you die, so I'm going to get us both killed. Why don't they kill them? <laughs> They're right in front of the thing. They, they're they like, well, we blew it up, and who cares about these two rebels? I, They don't kill them. I, it's very confusing. Because, one, Re, Re, uh, Rose could have gotten them both killed right there by either crashing into Finn or them both being there, and yet they don't die. There needed to be a better way to do that moment. There definitely needed to be a better way to do that. That, for sure, is a very valid complaint. An extremely valid complaint. I think I'm. I don't have complaints about Cannabite. Cannabite's fine. Um, that's the only valid complaint I got. That's it. Uh, the sh the warping in the ship into the other ship. It's at point blank range. For God's sakes, the reason why they don't do that is because it's gonna be expensive as balls. And how do you get in that range so you could do that? That's not normally gonna get allowed. Like, when they have these big ship battles, even if they had an inkling that you could do that, they would have killed a bunch of their own ships, because look at what happened with the chain reaction. You don't do that in the middle of a battle. That is a suicide run, and it was perfectly able to do that because they got too damn close to her, so she was able to blast him with that. It fits perfectly fine. It's also in a beautiful shot. That is a beautiful shot. There's a lot of beautiful shots in this movie. Scores really good. No, the scores are always good. The action was good. Like, uh, Kylo and Ray going up against whatever those red guys are is pretty damn cool. That was really good right there. Uh, what I wish we saw more of is what freaking Snoke does, which is I guess why it's there. Is she tries to take a lightsaber and just hits her with it and takes it back. We should be seeing that with Force Masters. That's something we should be seeing. He's like, bam! I wish we saw that with Yoda in Episode Two. Just. Dooku's like, no, it's time to sell this with a lightsaber. And you're just like, bitch. <laughs> just slaps it out of his hand. That's not how we're going to settle this. But there's a lot of great moments, and the humor's pretty good for the most part. Uh, it definitely got better than the first one, although I had a lot of... I had enjoyed one a lot. I mean, seven. There was a lot of enjoyable humor there. But some of it missed. Well, this one, the humor mostly lands pretty well. There's not too much of it, and what's there is pretty enjoyable. And I, another one is just... The more I watch this movie, the madder I was getting about the people bitching about things. Because I'm like, it's not that... This isn't terrible. Like, why are people bitching so... I've, did you guys watch the other movies? That's what it feels like. Like, seriously, I don't understand. Like, there's a lot of anti... SJW and anti-feminist stuff about this movie, and I don't understand why. Just because all the leadership's ladies and everything? I, I touched the lightsaber. There was so much hate towards Rose, the the actress of Rose. She's unearned. A lot of hate towards Ryan Johnson. Unearned. A lot of hate towards the people. It's very weird. And then just people just really hating these characters and thinking there was some feminist agenda. Very weird. I remember someone ranting that there was a vegan agenda with the Porgs, because the Porgs are really sad that Chewbacca was eating a Porg. He's like, no, they're sad their buddy's being eaten, because I'm pretty sure uh, these birds are eating the fish in this place. Like, they're not against eating meat. <laughs> they're not vegetarian things. Like, there's not much you can eat on that planet besides, you know, other creatures. Like, they're definitely not going to be a plant-eating group. They're puffins. Puffins don't eat plants. People were just nitpicking and trying to find things to get mad about, and I just... Sure, there's catharsis to getting mad about things, but y'all stupid. That's... <laughs> like, ugh. Mm, the more the, the more I watched this, the more I was just like, what are people bitching about? I don't get it. It's just a good movie. And... That's the best response I've got, is... Seriously, this was good. This was a good movie. Uh, with D&D &D out, I hope Ryan Johnson gets to make his trilogy. And it'll be good to just see what he makes instead of, you know, working with something else's material. That'll be interesting to see.
That's enough ranting. No, it's not. Here's some... No, I'm... that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. I don't want to berate you guys too much. I've actually hated this movie. I just... The evidence for me is just... No. <laughs> after seeing the evidence in full, after seeing the entire case, I, the judge, verdict that I don't understand the bit. All right. And I verdict that this movie in the rankings is, let's see here, last place is the prequels. This replaces that. No, it doesn't. So the la last place is prequels. Above that is, I think, Solo. Yeah, I think I put Solo there. Above that. Yeah, Rogue One goes there. And then above that, I'll say six, four, five. Seven. Now, where does eight go? That entire Luke ending was so damn good. I don't. Damn, that was so good. It was so good. It was so good. So good. Second place. Eighth gets second place. No, seven's pretty damn good. Seven. I could watch seven again right now in backwards order after watching eight. Like, I could watch 7 right now. It's midnight. I could watch 7 right now. Uh, 8, I think I'd need a little bit of time, then I could watch it again. So that's what decides it. 7's number 1, 8's number 2. James puts it as a hard number 1. We were blowing this movie as we were watching it. Oh my god. Uh, it was really enjoyable. What's number 2? <laughs> Jinx will figure it out in the future. Pew! 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 pew. Come on. It doesn't do it on command. Ah, ah, there we go. It's got to jiggle it up and down a couple times. There we go. <laughs> All right. So that's it. Now the next one we're the we're not done. We got to see nine. Obviously, nine's almost here. This comes out a week before nine. Okay. So there you go. So come back next week when we see our, well, the next Star Wars movie and we'll have our thoughts on the movie we saw that day. So there you go. So I have fun. Hope you have fun watching. And if you disagree on episode eight, go ahead and voice it. You can voice that. No problem with that. Yeah, no problem with that. I, yeah, yeah you, you can say it. You can say it. I don't have to agree with you. <laughs> Just say what you want. Just say whatever you feel. Go ahead and say it. At the end of the day, opinions are opinions. They're not facts. So, that right there is us watching Star Wars Episode Eight. Come back for the next one. I have fun over from watching. That's what's all about. Having fun. Thanks for coming by, and I'll see you next time.